Hi guys, welcome to lesson eight and a little bit of lesson nine. Before you continue, I wanna make sure uh, that you have printed out the clue cards and uh, worked on um, the mini book. So you should have filled out your clue cards while you were reading the mini book and um, printed out the elephant toothpaste experiment. We're gonna go over that a little bit, but um, I'm hoping you can find a, a parent or an adult or an older sibling who can help you with uh, the elephant toothpaste experiment. These are the supplies that you're gonna need. I also emailed your parents um, this little list for the experiment. Uh, there's also a book called Amber's Atoms or Read Aloud on the website. And um, I know that uh, some of it seems like it's for a lot younger kids, uh, but if you bear with me and go through it, then maybe it'll help um, help you become more aware of the first 10 uh, elements that are on the periodic table. We're going to start working on the periodic table here uh, soon. So today and uh, actually uh, next week. And I mean, we've been working on it with this book here, The Elements. And so I should have a video, part three, reactions and uses, um, and hydrogen is going to be talked about this week on this video. Okay, so let's see here. Last week, we learned the difference between physical and chemical properties. When we can identify a chemical property, we know that a chemical change has taken place. A chemical change produces a new substance with different properties than it had before. So we know that a chemical process is uh, when you burn a log. The log gets burned and there's a new substance. It's a pile of ashes. The chemical makeup of these ashes is different than the chemical makeup of this wood. Not only physical, but chemical. Physical would be if I were going to take a lemon and slice it in half. Well, it's still the same substance. It's just sliced in half. So a physical appearance has changed. So, like I said in the intro there, um, make sure you have your clue cards for chemical changes. You printed it out and you watched or you read the mini book, Clues for Chemical Changes. And um, I want you to do that now because we're going to talk a little bit about it, but more so so that you have it done and then you can come back here to this video if you need to. Um, now bring the chemical changes clue cards, that's hard to say, uh, say it 10 times fast, let's see if you can, um, and uh, bring it to class on Thursday. So you should have a lesson eight elephant toothpaste experiment printed up before you, of course, and um, we're going to work a little bit on this now. I, I want you to work with an adult on this because there are some things in here that um, maybe they can help you with to help. What you're going to be doing is um, trying to notice and log down different chemical changes or physical changes that occur, but mostly the chemical changes right now. So um, elephant toothpaste got its name because it looks like giant toothpaste big enough for an elephant. However, it is not toothpaste and should not be put into your mouth, okay? So on Thursday, uh, we will we'll talk about what happened during your experiment. You'll need to have your clue cards filled out before you do this experiment. It will help you. Um, then we're going to share with the class all of the changes that occurred when you did your experiment. I want you to keep in mind that there are physical and chemical changes, so try to log each change and tell whether you think it is physical or chemical. So I'm just going to read over this with you so that you know what to, to do in case you have a difficult time um, reading some of these words. There's 
pretty higher level. So, um, and they're hard to understand if you've never really heard them, especially if you've never really read them. So I'm going to go ahead and read this uh, to you. Information. This experiment involves physical and chemical changes. Use your clue cards to help you identify signs of chemical changes. Remember, physical changes do not change the chemical composition of a substance, whereas chemical changes form new substances. You will be decomposing hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, into water, H2O, and oxygen gas, O2. Remember, to decompose means to break down a compound into new substances. A catalyst will be used to help speed up the reaction. When a catalyst is used in an experiment to speed it up, the catalyst does not undergo any chemical changes. Our catalyst will be yeast. Hypothesis. To hypothesize means to make an educated guess. Make a guess based on information provided above or from doing additional research if desired. So which chemical change clues do you think you will observe? I want you to think about all this information here. If you need to rewind, then please go ahead and um, try and think about uh, Actually, it doesn't say any of the information as to what items you'll be using. So um, let me see. Maybe I'm going to read a little more of the, uh, in the directions um, for the experiment. But I want you to stop before you go forward after you can start thinking about what chemical changes you think might occur when you use, let me see, we're gonna go, you're going to use, um, okay, a beaker, let me see here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, water, okay, so you're gonna have, uh, okay, <laughs> you're gonna have food coloring, hydrogen peroxide, or salon developer, which I'm not sure that is, um, dish soap, yeast, warm water, and a spoon. I want you to think about what is going to happen because you're going to be using yeast as a catalyst to change the chemical makeup of hydrogen peroxide. So think about that, pause the video, and try to write down your hypothesis first, okay? Once you have your hypothesis, you are going to uh, record your data. So um, actually, you are. Oh, let's go over this really quick so you know what to be looking for uh, when you start doing the experiment. So <clears throat> chemical changes during the reaction. Did you observe a new sound? Yes or no? If yes, what did you observe? Write or draw a brief description. Did you observe a change in temperature or see a light? Yes or no? And then uh, write or draw a brief description of what you saw. A solid form as a precipitate. Now, if you remember the book, the mini book, it talked about a precipitate, a solid form as a precipitate. Did that happen? Yes or no? And if so, I want you to draw or write a brief description. Bubbles forming to indicate gas release. Yes or no? Draw or write a brief description. A new smell. Yes or no? And write or draw a brief description. A change in color. Yes or no? And then write or draw a brief description. Elephant toothpaste experiment instructions. Gather the needed supplies, a 250 milliliter graduated cylinder, a 50 milliliter beaker, and a 300 milliliter beaker for an em or an empty disposable water bottle, a one quarter cup measuring cup, a drinking cup, and a funnel. So if you don't have beakers or cylinders, which I don't, 
uh, go ahead and use an uh, empty disposable water bottle, a one quarter cup measuring cup, a drinking cup, and a funnel. A tray lined with foil, a scale, food coloring, hydrogen peroxide, at least 3% strength, or salon developer, dish soap, yeast, warm water, and a spoon. My intentions were to do the experiment and then have uh, pictures here for you, but due to time, I am just putting this up and then we'll have to talk about it when we have class on Thursday. One, place the foil tray, foil line tray on the counter and place the disposable water bottle on the tray. Pour some dish soap into the graduated cylinder or bottle. An exact amount isn't needed. It can be approximately two to four milliliters or several drops. Three, optional. Place about 10 to 15 drops of food coloring into your graduated cylinder or bottle. Fill the 250 milliliter graduated cylinder with hydrogen peroxide to the 100 milliliter mark or fill the water bottle with one half cup of hydrogen peroxide using a funnel if needed. Bubbles may form from the soap. Place the empty drinking cup on the scale. Press zero or tear to set the scale to read zero grams. Weigh 10 grams of yeast into the beaker. Do not press zero again. Um, measure 50 milliliters or one fourth cup of warm water into the cylinder. Pour the water into the beaker of yeast and stir with a spoon. Pay close attention to which of the six chemical changes occur clues you notice in this step. Use your clue cards to help you track, keep track. Carefully pour the yeast water mixture into the graduated cylinder or water bottle. If you are using a water bottle, you may need to use a funnel. Feel the temperature of the foam and outside of the, of the bottle. Record the observe, your observations. Which chemical changes did you observe? Remember, the clues need to be new observations that resulted from the reaction. So for Thursday's class, you'll need to bring your important people and chemistry cards from lesson one. And if you don't have them, you can find them on the website on lesson one and uh, print out uh, Mendeleev's original periodic table for a new card, Isaac Newton, which is right here. And then um, also if you, you can print out the periodic table of elements. And if you want me to laminate one for you, you should just let me know, email me or we'll in class go over it, I guess. Um, remember to do your chemical change, bring your chemical change um, clue cards that you would fill out while you're watching the mini book and then also use them for the elephant toothpaste experiment. And then I want you to come in and tell us what your, what happened, well, your hypothesis, and also if, what changes occurred. So, and we'll see you on Thursday. Yay.